today's scenario is scenario number 7, outflank from the 2015 scenario packet. You have two 12 inch circles in the middle of the board. Either one can be controlled for one control point or dominated for two control points. There is no kill box and the first player to five control points wins or caster assassination. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Light em Up Battle Reports. I've got a battle between the forces of Retribution and the My Forces of Scorn. I've got my Fist of Halak. I'm actually running it in Tier 4. If uh, you're listening to this after Mark 3, Fist of Halak was a popular theme force in Mark 2. And uh, it was normally taken in Tier 2. I'm taking it in Tier 4. And then I'm going up against my buddy's Tier 4 theme force for Forced Wall, Kalissa the Night's Whisper. So let's see how this goes, and I'll talk about Mark III afterwards. So I won the roll to go first and decided to take the first turn. My buddy, he went ahead and took the tur uh, the side of the board that had the uh, wall and gave me the side that had the forest to kind of channel me into the middle of the board. Uh, you'll see I actually have flare cannons in my list, which I think did a great job. Um, I'm actually probably going to be playing Fist to close out Mark II in a farewell tournament, so it'll be fun. But... Basically, I mean, going against Force Wall, all you can do is walk up. You're not allowed to do anything else. Uh, Xerxes gave press forward to the Citrati, and they were they went in the shield wall and walked up. And then everyone else just kind of moseyed on up. Going on to his turn one, his guys on the uh, top of his board there, the battle mages are going to run and uh, get into position. Then you'll see basically all of his jacks are going to be running with the uh, focus that Kalissa gave out. And then Kalissa, her, uh, the Magister, is going to walk up and put up his Force Barrier, give Kalissa a little cubby hole to walk up into. She's going to go up and pop her feet. There's going to be the three Battle Mages at the top of the screen that will not be in the feet, and the rest of her army will be. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, in Mark II, her feet is models in her control area gain stealth, friendly models gain stealth, and uh, cannot be charged for one turn. So uh, the three Archivists in the back there gave the Hydra three focus, and then we're on to my turn. Uh, Xerxes had actually put Defender's Ward on himself last turn, and he goes ahead and upkeeps that. And then my uh, Errata Sentinel, not knowing that the Battle Mages are immune to blast damage, shoots and scatters and does nothing. And then Flare Cannon that had gotten to position last turn takes a couple shots and manages to kill two of the Battle Mages that are not stealth, which was good. Range 14 is pretty far. Uh, Xerxes walks up and puts up inhospitable ground for three Fury and leaves himself on one Fury, which may be a problem here soon. Gives press forward to the Satrati again, who go into shield wall one more time and walk up to create a wall of spell immune because of Vorkesh persons. Vorkesh giving spell immunity is fantastic. It can hurt sometimes. I mean, that's why they don't have Defender's Ward on them and they. Uh, and Xerxes has it on himself, but in this matchup against Battle Mages is actually pretty good. I can't pull my guys out of formation. I uh, see at the top there, my Incendiarii are, some, are scattering some uh, shots, lighting some dudes on fire, and even though they don't take blast damage, they will light on fire, and if it doesn't go out, it'll just kill them. And then everything else just kind of walks up into position. On his turn, one fire goes out, and one Battle Mage burns to death. So, back onto his turn two. Uh, he's going to take a couple seconds here to try to figure out how he can kill me because I'm sitting on one transfer. I will say I do tend to play it a little a little loose with uh, I like to bait out bad assassinations. His actually isn't that bad because his is actually pretty good. Um, only sitting on one Fury. Kalissa has the uh, Siphon Bolt feature, I believe it's called, where she can... Uh, suck up one of my fury to use it to boost against me so I don't even have any transfers if she hits me but uh her big jack there the hydra is going to go up and he's going to shoot one of my satrati at armor 20 against his pal 15 boost the damage and manage to kill my armor 20 satrati one shot that dude 
Kayla, so you'll see her walk up. She has only one focus left on her because she doled out some focus to her jacks. And uh, needs a boost at 8, I believe, because of my defender's board. And misses. So hey, anyone who's watched my channel before, boost at 8's actually working out in my favor. Which is a nice twist of events. Other than that, his mana cores, both mana cores will go up and both mana cores will take shots at Xerxes. The first one ended up doing uh, 9 damage, which I transferred. So now I'm sitting on 0. Second one did three damage, which I just obviously had to take. And then uh, his Phoenix walks up and shoots and does no damage, but does set me on fire. Magister will walk up and do up, uh, put up Force Barrier to try to save Kalissa from uh, gunshots. And then his Battle Mages are gonna get charge orders at the top there. We'll see them charging here in a second. Charge, there they all go. Three battle mages will charge my three incendiarii, and with some, I'd say slightly above average dice, manage to kill one, and then kills the second one, and then beat backs, and then with three punches kills the third one. So three battle mages killed three incendiarii. That's uh, okay, sure. And the other incendiary unit, the, or sorry, the other battle mage unit at the bottom there is going to walk up into position and he's considering what to do. He's going to get, um, he's going to be able to get one force bolt into Xerxes, but he's got, sitting at 1520. Um, that's kind of hard to, it's hard to beat. Uh, so he will take a push shot at my sentinel to try and push him out of aim range of uh, the magister. Unfortunately, it only goes a half inch and then... He will miss the Force Bolt shot on Xerxes. And then after that, take a couple ineffective shots, ineffectual shots at my RKRI. And everything else just runs up. Uh, whatever the thing is that puts out the covering fire, puts out its one covering fire. And then we're back on to my turn. So Xerxes is going to upkeep Defender's Board um, after we do the fire checks. The fire checks ends up killing one of my Flare Cannon crew. And then does no damage to Xerxes and does, goes out on everyone else so Xerxes is gonna pull back the fury All right, and then here we got the uh, sentinel he's gonna aim after I measure and uh, he will aim to shoot the magister hit him boost damage and on four dice damage kill the magister off so bye bye force barrier which means Kalissa can now die to my blast damage from my incendiary guy. She's only sitting at like armor 14, I believe. So first my uh, flayer cannon crew up there that can aim and can shoot. He's going to take a couple shots. He gets three shots into her and hits one time, managing to do uh, seven points of damage, which is not bad. So whoever thinks that cannon crews can't do anything, man, I can't wait for Mark III. They're going to be bonkers in Mark III. And then my arc I are going to get run orders, and I will run that one arc just outside of engage range of Kalissa. And the rest of them will just run to get out of the way. And Cindy I are going to walk up and start taking some gunshots. Uh, when they miss, Drift drifts way past Kalissa the first time. The second one decides to just shoot the jack instead, because it's a lot easier to hit, and that will do enough to set Kalissa on fire and do uh, a couple points of damage to her with that and then the last two incendiarii will combine range and kill her for a victory to scorn so okay well that was a good game and uh, definitely significantly uh, better for me on the outcome than it was for my buddy <laughs> and uh, a lot better than the last game I put up on the channel so, I said I was going to talk about Mark III. I'm not going to talk too much because I'm sure you guys have heard it from every other podcast and show in the entire universe, but I'm excited, personally. Uh, we've got about five or six days until the release of the rules, and about three and a half weeks until the actual official launch of Mark III, the new edition of War Machine and Hordes, and uh, I cannot wait. Uh, so, probably going to be playing Signar. I'll definitely be breaking out scoring though because they're an awesome looking army and I'm sure I can still get them to work. I don't believe a lot of people's complaints about them being the worst faction based on the spoilers. I think uh, people need to wait and see and see how it actually does on the tabletop. And until that point, I, uh, I can't wait to actually do it. I get them on the tabletop and actually get some playtime with them. 
but thanks for watching thanks for taking up your uh, time and probably your lunch hour and hopefully I'll see you all again in a couple weeks later